Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady and in this video we're going to explore short multiplication which is multiplication by numbers between 2 and 9 and we're going to look at how children can learn it so that they become really confident in what they're doing and creative and able to cope with the maths that's coming in the future. So I'm going to explain how children learn short multiplication with base 10 apparatus so that they deeply understand it. Then we'll look at how they get to know and use the formal notation for short multiplication. Then we'll look at how children build up their fluency and become really confident both with short multiplication and with their tables together. Before you watch this video, it's really helpful if you've got a deep understanding of base 10 materials. So here's a link to that video. And it's also really helpful if you've seen the video on the foundations of multiplication. And here's a link to that video now. OK, let's get going. Let's look at this multiplication, 27 times 3. And you could just give your child some base 10 apparatus and see if they can build this with their apparatus. Then you'll know if they properly understand what they're doing. They may try to build 27 lots of 3. So they would start, so you're using base 10 blocks to build up 27 lots of 3. It would take a very long time, but if that's what they really want to do, let them do it. They should get the right answer and having time to explore their own thinking is really, really useful and it's something you can give them because you're working with them one to one. However, it's much easier to do 3 lots of 27. 27 which is going to look something like this and then all they've got to do is count how many blocks it's much quicker than with 27 lots of 3 because you can quickly gather the tens And if we've done a bit of work on tables, they should quickly see that 3 sevens are 21. So we're going to take 20 of those and turn them into tens. And that will leave us with the one. So the answer is 81. So if they've done it the other way around, show them this way around once they've done their method and they'll probably swap to this one because it's so much quicker. And then we can notate it 27 times 3. Well just like with column addition and column subtraction we're starting at the right with the ones. We won't be with division so if they've just done some division and they're coming back to multiplication they could get confused. But we start with the ones 3 sevens are 21. Well, that was this bit here. This was our 21. We can see it right here. And 20 of it became two tens. So we record those there. And only one, this one, stayed as a one and goes into our answer as a one. Then we had three lots of two tens, which is six tens. And we've got the two tens that came from the ones. So we've got eight tens. Therefore, our answer is 81. Every short multiplication can be done like this. You just build this many groups of that many objects using your base 10 apparatus and put them all together. If you're working one to one with a child, one of the benefits of that is that you can develop notation with them pretty quickly because you can tell whether they understand it or not. And if they do, then you're fine. So for a calculation like this, 153 times 6, you can show your hundreds as squares and you can quite quickly build up the whole calculation 153 times 6 and then 153 times 6 notated well we've got six lots of three ones here they are there's 18 of those so eight of them are going to stay as ones and we're going to make one extra 10 this one which we'll record here. And then for your tens, we've got six lots of five tens. Here they are. And we've got the one extra ten. Six fives are 30. We can count them if we want. 
So we've got 31 tens all together. We're going to have to change some of them into hundreds. There's 100, 200, 300, and this 10 is left over. So there's one 10 in our answer and three 100s to carry. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one hundreds. So our answer is 918. As I explained with column addition and column subtraction, children often make the mistake of starting with the hundreds, starting working left to right instead of right to left, because working right to left is so counterintuitive. If they do, just let them. If they get into a muddle, see if they can sort it out themselves. Sometimes children do brilliant work working left to right and then remind them how much easier it is working right to left because you don't have to cross anything out. You're much less likely to make mistakes and it's just simpler. Hence, we work right to left. OK, developing fluency. With column multiplication and column subtraction, I simply said do lots of them because you're learning those additions within 20 and then those subtractions within 20 as you do each. With multiplication, it's harder because there are a lot of tables results and they're harder to do. You can't just see them in your fingers and toes. There's a much bigger cognitive load. The brain is working harder as children are trying to calculate the individual multiplication results within the wider short multiplication. So it's tempting just to give children a mixture of short multiplication calculations, give them lots of them, but they find that really tiring and it doesn't really help them build fluency with their tables because there's so many different results, they don't get quick at them. So it's really helpful to do some work with your child on the two times table and then give them lots of short multiplications by two. And then they're going to be practicing their two times tables because all those results are in those column multiplications, but there's only 10 results they're playing with. So they become fluent at them really quickly because they're repeating the same results again and again. So do short multiplication by two until they're fluent at it. It's also great to start with multiplication by two because you don't need much apparatus. So when you've done lots of multiplication by two and they're fluent with that, then move on to multiplication by five because it's the next easiest table. It's structural because you can see the fives within 10. Do lots of column multiplication by five until your child is fluent with it. If you're using an app for tables, add each table into the app once your child has done a couple of pages of multiplication by that number. They should be pretty fluent and the app will help them become really, really quick at the right time in the right way. When they've mastered two and five, you can work through the others one at a time. So if you want worksheets for multiplications by different numbers and you can't find any easily, I should have some live on my sites within a couple of weeks of this video going live. Thanks to the fabulous Jeff Kutcher who's creating free worksheets for me. Thank you, Jeff, during lockdown. And they will be available in my Facebook group, which is Expert Primary Maths Teaching, and also through the sites that are linked on the description of my YouTube channel. They're all free downloads. And if you want more than one sheet, if you just click on the link, it takes you to Jeff's site where you can download more worksheets. You just have to be on a laptop or a desktop computer with Adobe Acrobat Reader installed to use Jeff's site. You don't need that for mine. You can use my standalone worksheets on any device. So your takeaways from this video are to work with your child on short multiplication, one multiplication table at a time. Make sure they've done some work on their multiplication table, then work through some calculations with base 10 apparatus until they're happy with them. Then give them lots of practice until they're fluent with that multiplication table and they're fluent at doing short multiplication by the number you're focusing on. And then if you're using an app for tables fluency, add that table into the app. Then repeat it all with your next number, working through two, five, and then the others in the order that suits you. And your child should become great at their tables and great at short multiplication. Thank you so much for taking the time to put this effort in with your child. I want to live in a world where every child is really numerate and has the confidence to 
analyze all the information and data that's thrown at them by this world so that they can make sense of it and make wise decisions for our future. So thank you once again. If you have any questions or feedback for me, please post them under this video. I really welcome critical feedback. I love to learn from my mistakes. I'm really grateful to people who tell me how to do this better. The next video is on mental multiplication, which is calculations like we've been doing today, but with mental strategies. And I really hope you'll join me for that. Bye for now.